If you want to become a full stack developer, then this video is for you. Now, this is one of the most confusing fields that you can get into within software development because every tutorial uses a different stack. There's so many languages and technologies. It feels like you need to learn everything and it's just extremely overwhelming. So that's why I'm going to break it down for you in this video. And look, the reality is that you need to pick a niche, which we're going to talk about here, focus on a core set of skills, and then learn the skills that you need to know no matter what type of development you do. So I'm going to give you a few different options here and break it down step by step. So after this video, you hopefully have a lot more clarity. So let's quickly break down what a full stack developer is. Now, for most applications, you're going to have both a front end and a back end. Now, a front end is the interface. It's what the user sees. So think something like a website or maybe an app on your phone. And the back end is handling the data and the logic of the application. So if you're a full stack developer, that usually means that you're working on both the front end and the back end. Now, in reality, most full stack developers are going to lean or specialize in either front end or back end. So me, for example, you could call me a full stack developer because I can write code on the front end and the back end. But in reality, I would lean more towards back end. That's what I prefer and that's what I'm better at. That's totally fine. And when we say full stack developer, it just means that your role is working on both the front end and the back end. That's it. Now, one of the most challenging parts about becoming a full stack developer is actually picking your stack. Now, what is a stack? Well, for any project, you're typically going to have, again, your front end, your back end, and then something like a database, and you might have some other components as well. Now, for each of those different components, you're going to use a different technology or a different framework. So, for example, a really popular stack is the MERN stack. This stands for MongoDB, Express, and then React Native. So these are the three main technologies that you're using in your project. You might have something like a LAMP stack. There's all these other different kinds of stacks that exist out there. And as a full stack developer, you're typically going to specialize in one of these stacks. So you're going to learn a front end language or framework, a back end language and framework, and then something related to a database, right? So you need to pick one of these and you don't want to get lost going between so many different stacks. So the first step here is to pick a stack. I'm going to give you a few options for these in a minute, but once you have the stack, then you can start learning those different technologies. So you'll actually be job ready. So again, stack, just a set of different technologies and tools. Many developers know multiple stacks. But when you're starting out, I recommend just sticking with one. And just by the way, the stack that you pick does have importance, obviously, but it's not as important as the core skills that you'll learn as a software engineer. If you can build a great application in a MERN stack, a lot of those skills are going to translate over into various other stacks. So don't get caught up on this step. Just pick one and then move on to actually start learning. You can always change later. Now, for the rest of the video, I'm going to go through a ton of tools and technologies that you should learn as a full stack developer. Now, you could learn all of the topics that I'm going to go through here on your own, but I personally always find that it's significantly easier and a lot faster if you run through a proper course that has a well-defined curriculum. Now, that's why for today's video, I partnered up with Simply Learn. Now, Simply Learn is one of the leading online platforms for tech and business education. They've got a full catalog of hands-on courses and learning programs, and the full stack development program with Gen AI delivered by Simply Learn in partnership with Purdue University Online is seriously well put together. It has live instructor-led classes, not just videos, and they're built in collaboration with some of the world's top universities and companies. Now, this curriculum is project-based, career-focused, and covers topics like front-end, backend, RESTful APIs, version control, and a whole lot more, which honestly really closely mirrors what I'm about to say in this video. Now, they've got thousands of five-star reviews, recommendations from SwitchUp, Core Support, and Forbes, and tons of student success stories from people who completely shifted careers after finishing the program. Now, if you're serious about getting into full stack development, check out Simply Learn's programs, visit the link in the description, or use the pinned comment to get started and take the first step towards your next big career move. Thanks to Simply Learn for sponsoring this video. Now, let's continue. So, on your journey to become a full stack developer, there's some core web development concepts that you're going to need to understand regardless of which stack you use. Now, first is how the web works so, HTTP requests, responses, status codes, etc. Next is the client server model. So you have a front end, this makes a request to a back end, the back end handles some logic, it maybe pass, passes this to a database, sorry. This is called client server architecture and it's a topic you need to look at. Next, APIs and JSON. So APIs expose data, JSON is the main language of communication and you need to understand these concepts. 
then we have things like DNS and hosting and just basic internet plumbing. So at a high level, you should understand some basic networking concepts and what happens when you actually go to a website. Sure, you visit a URL, but what happens then? What is DNS? How do you get redirected? These are all important concepts. Now, once you've learned the basics of the web, I do recommend starting out your journey here with front end. Now, like I said before, when you're a full stack developer, you have a lot of choices. But no matter what choice you go with, you are going to need to know some of the following topics that I go over here. So the first thing that I recommend that you do, if you want to get into this, is learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, learn the fundamentals of these three languages, HTML for creating web pages, CSS for doing styling, and then JavaScript for all of the real actions of the web page, right? Anything dynamic. Now, after you do that, I suggest picking a modern web framework. Now, these are going to tie into the stack decision, but again, it's not a huge deal. Just learn one of them. You can always move on to another one later. So you have a few different choices here. You have React, which is personally my favorite, something like Vue. You also have other frameworks like Next.js. This is kind of a meta framework on top of React. And then you have things like Angular, and there's a few other front end frameworks as well. Now, within these frameworks, you want to learn things like components, props, state, routing, forms, asynchronous calls, and then you can move on to things like CSS frameworks where you learn either Tailwind or Bootstrap. Now, there's a few other ones as well. Again, I'm not going to list every single possible stack and technology in this video. The point is there's a list of core skills that you need to know no matter what you pick, and that's mostly what I'm trying to cover here. Now, once you've learned a front-end framework, it's time to move on to talk about the back-end and start learning some back-end technologies. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do here is pick a language that you want to work with for the back-end. Now, the easiest language you could go with here is JavaScript because you've already learned it for the front-end. Now, within JavaScript, you can use something called called Node.js, which allows you to run JavaScript code on the server rather than the client. Client would be the front end, server would be the back end. So you could learn something like Express, for example, and this would allow you to create back end servers with JavaScript. Now, another popular option would be something like Python. A lot of people like this as a second language. You can use something like Django, Fast API, or Flask to, again, make websites and back end APIs in Python. You also have other options like Go, C Sharp, and Java, but I suggest if you're just starting out to pick either Python or JavaScript, that's going to be the fastest option for you. But if you have a particular stack in mind, then of course you have to pick the appropriate language for that stack. Now, regardless of which language you learn, you need to learn topics like routing, controllers, middleware, error handling, and then understanding authentication topics. So things like JWT tokens and sessions. You're also going to have to know how to build RESTful APIs. So representational state transfer, this is a very common topic when it comes to backend and optionally learning about things like GraphQL. Then you're also going to want to look at things like file uploading, background jobs, rate limiting, and more advanced API concepts. The overall idea here is that you need to pick a language, you pick a framework within that language, and then you learn all of these topics where you can have a backend connected to a front end. And ideally on your backend, you have some layer of authentication. Of course, there's a lot of other stuff to go over here, but start with front end, move on to back end, and then go to the next topic that we'll get into now. So this section is where I can be a bit more concrete. As a software engineer, there's a set of tools that you just need to know. So I'm going to go over a bunch of them, and these are specifically relevant for full stack developers. Now, first is Git and GitHub. You need to understand this no matter what type of development you do. This is talking about version control, so how you save various versions of your code and work with other developers. You need to learn things like branches, merging, and pull requests. Then the terminal or commands line interface. As a developer, you need to be comfortable navigating and running scripts from the command line and being able to use commands like CD, LS, PWD. If that doesn't mean anything to you, then you need to learn this topic. Again, commands line and kind of uh, terminal, right? That's what we'll call it. Next, package managers. Now, whether you're using JavaScript, you might be learning something like NPM, or if you're learning Python, you might be learning something like PIP. But you need to understand how to manage dependencies of your projects. Then, Postman or Insomnia for API testing. Now, when it comes to writing APIs, you need a way to test these APIs, sometimes without having a front end. And I highly suggest learning a tool like Postman, which will allow you to actually test the APIs and see the responses you're getting from them. 
Then you also want to look at things like extensions for your editors. So whether you're using VS Code, JetBrains, etc., understanding how to use these tools the best is going to help you significantly. And learning about things like debugging and various integrations with Git or linters and formatters is going to be really helpful inside of your IDE. Of course, there's some other tools that you could learn, but pretty much all of these will apply to any area of development, so you need to get good at them. And now we move on to databases. Now again, as a full stack developer, you're touching pretty much every area of the code. And while you might not need to be an expert here, you definitely need to understand this. So when we talk about databases, there's three main things that I want to go over. We have SQL or structured query language. We have NoSQL, no structured query language, and ORMs, object relational mappings. Now, SQL databases would be things like PostgreSQL or MySQL. And you need to understand basic SQL syntax and what makes a SQL database. So tables, relationships, how you structure data in that format. Then I also recommend learning about NoSQL. This is typically a document store database. It works a little bit differently. And an example of a NoSQL database is something like MongoDB. So you should be comfortable working with both and understand the trade-offs between a SQL and a NoSQL database. So you're going to learn CRUD operations, so creating, reading, updating, and deleting, and then understand things like schemas, indexes, joins, and relationships. Now, after that, I recommend looking into something called an ORM. Now, an ORM allows you to write native code, so something in Python or JavaScript, that translates automatically to the equivalent SQL code. This is what's used quite often rather than actually writing raw SQL queries. And you can learn something like Prisma if you're working with JavaScript or Node, or something like SQL Alchemy if you're working with Python. You also have something called Mongoose if you're working with MongoDB. And then lastly, there are a few small design principles you can learn, like normalization, foreign keys, etc. Again, don't need to be an expert here, but you should understand databases because that's going to be a part of your stack. Now, after you've learned databases, we get into deployment. Now, this is usually a designated role at a company for a DevOps engineer. But again, as a full stack developer, you're often thrown into all areas of the code. So it's important to understand some key components here. All right, so when we talk about deployment, we're talking about continuous integration, continuous deployment, hosting, and then potentially containerization, which I'll talk about in a second. All right, so you should know the basics of CICD, again, standing for continuous integration and continuous deployment, where you're able to automate basic deployment workflows using things like GitHub Actions. You should be comfortable using platforms like Vercel, Render, Railway, or maybe DigitalOcean for hosting, for example, front-end user interfaces. Vercel, for example, is very popular for really quickly hosting React applications or Vue applications, etc. Now, after that, we can talk about things like containerization. Now, containerization is a way of deploying applications. It's a little bit more advanced, and this involves using things like Docker and Kubernetes. Now, this isn't something that I think everyone needs to dive into right away, but it's a good topic to learn if you have some time. Now, other than that, I also recommend understanding environment variable files, secrets, and build pipelines, and then having some basic monitoring under your belt, so understanding how to do things like logging and understanding errors and uptime of your application. Again, this is kind of a vague topic, but just generally, you should know how to deploy a basic application or be familiar with some of these concepts. So I know that was a lot of stuff, so I'm going to kind of summarize it a little bit here into a learning path that I would suggest for you. So you're going to start by picking a stack, okay? This could be React plus Node plus PostgreSQL. This could be a Python-based stack. This could be a C-sharp-based stack. Again, it really depends on what you want to do, and I can't tell you the stack in this video unless I was able to talk with you and get some more information. Now, once you've picked a stack, again, you got to pick one and stick with it. You're going to follow tutorials to learn this stack in the order that I said, front end, back end, database, deployment, etc., tools, right? And what you're going to do is start building variations based on those tutorials. Now, focus on completing projects, but not being absolutely perfect. The more projects you can build here and the more applications you can spin up in your desired stack, the better of a developer you're going to become. So you should start by building a basic CRUD app. This is create, read, update, delete. Think of something like a to-do list application where you're creating entries, reading them, updating them, and deleting them. Next step, you would move on to something with authentication. So you're actually authenticating the users and identifying which user is which. Then you can move on to a full application where you build something like a blog site or a social media site or a clone of a popular tool. Now, I also recommend, if possible, contributing to open source projects and getting real hands-on experience. In fact, if you're struggling with this and you really want some guidance, consider checking out my program DevLaunch from the link below, where we actually help developers one-on-one -on -one and we tell them exactly what they should be doing. 
Anyways, that is a quick kind of synopsis and summary of the video. That's all I have for you here. That is a roadmap to become a full stack developer. Of course, we could get a lot more detailed. If you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. And I look forward to seeing you in another video.